Okay. Take three. <laughs> Thank you for downloading the episode, the podcast, Talking More Wrestling. Larry here, More 365, and this is the third time I'm recording this because I've already screwed up twice. So this is fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I am here right now, actually outside uh, the Seaford train station in Long Island, New York, Seaford, Long Island, and um, my cousin-in-law, I guess, I, I don't know how legally binding that term is, but uh, my cousin-in-law has arranged this um, uh, amazing uh, cleanup, neighborhood cleanup, if you will, uh, starting at the train station and, and pretty much wherever their heart's content. Um, we'll have him on a little later. And uh, it's it's great to see right now. We have uh, some uh, little leaguers uh, basically running around. Uh, they'll probably turn this one into a game, I guess. Maybe we'll get a little softball happening. I think we have some scouts, which is I love to see. That's awesome. Get some of those uh, community service credits in for your uh, Star Life uh, ranks. Eagle rank? Well, this wouldn't be an eagle because it would have to arrange it, I believe, unless the rules have changed um, and then, um, you know, anyone else who basically wants to, to show up, as long as this banner holds up, right now the wind is kicking in, which you're going to hear. So you may also hear me get up every now and again and fix uh, my banner here. So, yeah, it is what it is. But, um, and 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 he, uh, Jim is his name, uh, was gracious enough to be like, hey, look, schmuck, you know, I got you a sign. Uh, how about you use it for once? And so I set it up here. Uh, at the train station, and uh, going to be doing some uh, talking because we have a huge, huge week coming up in... Oh. And that's what I'm going to be battling with today, folks. All right. Yes, battling the elements today. <laughs> All right, let me uh, reset some of that up. Okay, we're good there. I don't think we're going to need that anymore. I'll put that right there. All right, well, this is the, uh, the magic of editing. We'll get some of this going and re-going. I guess I should sit over here. I should have gotten a third chair. Well, I guess I can technically... Eh, whatever. All right, at this point, it is what it is. So hold for edit. So coming up this week is a huge, huge uh, week of wrestling. It's basically the, the premiere week, if you will. Uh, oh, I guess that's actually that kind of makes sense. Why then things are debuting when they are. Um, so big premiere week in the world of wrestling. It is now a better time. Than ever is now. No time has been better than now to be a fan of professional wrestling. Uh, because the week that we're talking about, the week of October 1st, premiere week. And not only do we are we getting the season premiere of Raw, uh, the season premiere of Total Divas, um, the f uh, premiere, if you will, the two-hour premiere of NXT on USA Live. Uh, Friday, October, was that, 4th is the 20th anniversary of SmackDown and its debut on Fox, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But also, when, going back to Wednesday, finally we're going to see the episode, the premiere episode of AEW Dynamite on TNT. And, um, you know, it sounds like an overload, but to me it sounds like prime real estate to uh, do a lot more podcasting about wrestling. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be busy for me and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, you know, recently going to the Triple A show, going to you know watching Ring of Honor. It's even getting wanting to get back into Impact because Impact is moving to Access uh, later in October. We'll talk about that as the weeks go on, but I think Impact bought Access actually. That's how that worked. And um, now 
they're pretty much putting themselves on their own show. Not only that, but Fridays will also have WOW and New Japan on access. And basically the only day then would be Thursday. And even then, I think if you have independent uh, .tv, I'm probably going to have that wrong, and Brandon will correct me on that one. There's some wrestling on there as well. So basically now we have, God, God help us, there's a, a huge pay-per-view weekend. Hello, good morning. How are you? <laughs> um, so it's going to be a busy, busy week. And let's just talk about the premiere, first of all, of Raw coming up. Um, I'm actually going to try and hopefully put this up tonight, actually, when I record, because it will make sense, because I'm talking about the premiere week, and then I can talk about the results of the premiere week uh, when it uh, next week. So uh, on Raw, we're going to have... The Universal Championship will be defended. Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. Now, it's great to see Mysterio in a title match. Um, He definitely deserves a title match. He's, you know, one of the few veterans, I think, that everyone still enjoys, still likes. Um, But I believe this is all setting up because last week Rollins had Braun Strowman. Now he's got to deal with Rey Mysterio. And then this Sunday, a week from when I'm recording, is going to be Hell in a Cell. When Rollins steps inside Hell in a Cell to defend against the fiend Bray Wyatt. Now, Ray, I mean, in my opinion, you know, I feel that definitely Ray, first of all, can certainly walk away Monday with the world title, uh, excuse me, with the universal title, but I think Rollins, you know, has enough energy, has enough wherewithal, and he wants to get to Hell in a Cell. Uh, even though he doesn't really want to step in the ring with the fiend, as we've seen in recent times, uh, Rollins is has been absolutely petrified of the fiend, and uh, golly, I can't blame him. Uh, you know, the fiend is terrifying. Uh, he haunts your nightmares as he does mine. Um, but you know, with Rollins getting past Rey Mysterio, if he gets past Rey Mysterio again, he's going to have to deal with the fiend. And you know, it's one thing we've seen the fiend now a couple of times, and. Look, the Firefly Funhouse is creepy as can be. Um, and it's one thing to have to battle the Fiend just in a regular match, in a regular ring. But now we're talking about the confines of Hell in a Cell. Let's not forget what this demonic structure has done. Mick Foley being tossed off the, the roof of the originally smaller Hell in a Cell. Um, going through the table. It has ended the career of referee Tim White. Um, let's talk about some of the epic battles uh, Undertaker and Brock Lesnar twice inside Hell in a Cell. Um, actually, speaking of the Undertaker, Undertaker and Triple H have probably have the best history inside Hell in a Cell. Not necessarily against each other, though they have at WrestleMania was one of them, or the only time they were inside Hell in a Cell together. But... Um, You know, both of them have tremendous win-loss records inside the cell. Uh, Last year, when they unfortunately painted it red, which was still weird, uh, Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy, I mean, the the, the gash on the side of Orton's leg because of the cell, uh, just gruesome, absolutely gruesome. But, with that being said, I am pretty sure that Rollins will get past Rey Mysterio this Monday, but come hell in a cell, I am quite positive that his fears will overtake him and uh, we may see I think we're going to see a new universal champion at Hell in a Cell and if the Fiend gets his hands on the title he will truly have the whole world in his hands Um, it's a sight you don't want to think about it's a sight you don't want to see but uh, nightmares unfortunately are real and they will be this Sunday at Hell in a Cell Uh, also actually while we're speaking about Raw and Hell in a Cell, the Raw Women's Championship will be defended as for the second time in history the women step inside Hell in a Cell. Becky Lynch, the man, against the boss, Sasha Banks. Banks has history. Of course, her and Charlotte, first ever, not only first ever women's Hell in a Cell, but the first ever main event of a pay-per-view inside the cell. Uh... Becky, not as much history uh, with that, but Becky is definitely tenacious. Uh, She's the only woman to pin Ronda Rousey. That happened at WrestleMania inside MetLife Stadium. Uh, Actually, the last time I podcasted from outside. (laughs) So, uh, so, um, and this is the two of the four horsewomen 
of NXT of WWE. Uh, you know, there is no love lost between Sasha and Becky. Uh, Becky has all the confidence in the world, which is amazing. She's been running on just a full tank since Mania. Uh, I personally, I wish she was still Becky uh, two belts, but it is what it is. But we are now in October at this point, and she won the titles in April, so that would have been daunting uh, for two titles in that kind of a, a time span. But Sasha's renewed. She's revigored. That's not a word. Um, she's back. You know, she took time off. She left after WrestleMania. Uh, she had already gone on record publicly saying that she was upset. She was not in the main event, that she was stuck in a, in a tag title match that meant nothing for titles that meant nothing, uh, which I disagree with her. Um, I think the women's tag titles are definitely needed. They were deserving. Uh, Bailey and Sasha were great first-time champions. The Iconics, I love them as tag champions. They could have defended the titles on a more regular basis, but that's for them to decide. Uh, and then now uh, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss have been fighting champions. But Becky and Sasha, as much as they've been best friends, it's usually the best friends that become the bitter enemies. You know, there was a pay-per-view years ago in your house Best friends, better enemies. It was Shawn Michaels against Diesel. Now, Shawn Michaels and Diesel, former tag team champions, uh, and it just, you know, I guess the the jealousy, even though Diesel was champion for, for almost a year at that time, uh, the popularity of Shawn Michaels, when Michaels finally won the title at WrestleMania 12, just got to uh, Big Daddy Cool. And that's what led to them having the no disc One of the best matches uh, I think, especially at an in your house when they had those. But uh, let's think about it. you know Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, Razor Ramon and the One Two Three Kid. Let's go even further back: Hulk Hogan and Paul Orndorff for crying out loud. Best friends, bitter enemies. So Sasha and Becky inside Hell in a Cell. I think Becky though will walk out still the Raw Women's Champion. Um, now. Also, Raw is getting... Actually, Raw and SmackDown are getting new announced teams. Uh, but the Raw announced team is, is really the shocking one. Not in a bad way, don't get me wrong. Uh, the new Raw announced team is going to be Vic Joseph, who is a tremendous talent. I'm very happy for him. I'm very happy that he got the Raw um, announced gig. Uh, Jerry the King Lawler returns to the, uh, to the broadcast booth, which is excellent because the King does it like no other. And then there's a new uh, gentleman, uh, Dio Madden. Now, I got to admit, I am unfamiliar with Dio Madden. I, um, I, I know he's from the NFL. Brendan Williams, I think it was his, his actual name. But uh, I'm unfamiliar with him from NXT, Dio Madden. But he's got to be doing something good if they're putting him on the Raw announce team. So, uh, well, only time will tell on that one. The um, Let's jump over to SmackDown, actually, because SmackDown will be debuting on the USA Network this... No, I'm sorry. We'll be debuting on Fox this Friday at 8 p.m. A whole new era. I'm very happy they're using ACDC as their theme song. Um, and it looks like WWE is double doubling down on SmackDown. Uh, it appears just the way the lineup goes, it looks like SmackDown will kind of be now the lead-in show for the weekend. Um, like, I don't think it's going to be the last show before a pay-per-view. Well, I mean, technically it will be a last show before a pay-per-view. But um, actually, you know what? I don't know because I gotten, I saw information about travel package for WrestleMania. Nothing official, don't get me wrong. And they were talking about tickets Friday to SmackDown, like Saturday NXT, Sunday pay-per-view, Monday Raw. Maybe it wasn't WrestleMania. But then when I saw the travel package information for Royal Rumble for Houston, they didn't have those. In fact, it was only Worlds Collide, apparently a pay-per-view. I think, it, unfortunately, I hate to say it, I think it may take over, take over. Uh, I don't think they'd be doing that anymore. I don't know. But Worlds Collide and then the pay-per-view. There was no Raw. There was no SmackDown. So I don't know where they're going with that. Um, that's, that's another story at another time. But this Friday on the debut episode of SmackDown on Fox, the WWE Championship will be on the line when Kofi Kingston defends against the beast, Brock Lesnar. How in the hell 
is Kofi Kingston going to get past Brock Lesnar? If you want to see a preview of this match, go to the WWE Network. Look up Beast in the East. It was a network special live from Kurgan Hall in Tokyo. And it was the um, it was a show where Balor won the NXT title from Kevin Owens. But look it up. And there was, you'll see Brock Lesnar against Kofi Kingston. Look, it was a different Kofi, a different Brock then than it is now. But I think the outcome is going to be the same. I don't, I don't see how Kofi can get past the likes of a Brock Lesnar. And this Friday, I think we will see an, a new WWE champion crowned. Um, and once again, Brock Lesnar on top of the mountain. He's a part-timer. Everyone knows my thoughts on the part-timer as his champion, but I'm not the one who's stepping in the ring. So, But I think Brock Lesnar will walk out the 20th anniversary of SmackDown, the first SmackDown on Fox as the new WWE champion. Then the landscape will change as we know it. NXT uh, will now, I mean, that, this would be the third week NXT was on USA, but it will be the two-hour debut, as it will be two hours every Wednesday. Uh, I think because of the, uh, the series finale of Suits, the last couple of weeks, USA uh, had NXT at eight, the 8 p.m. hour, and then it moved to the WWE Network at the 9 p.m. hour. Uh, the tag team titles, NXT Tag Team Champions, the Undisputed Era, will defend against the former tag team champions, the Street Profits, and the uh, current over 330, I think actually by the time it airs, I think over 340 days almost, uh, NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler. And I think that 341 is just this run. Yeah, it's got to be. Because she won the title at Evolution. She won the title back. And that was back. That was last October, 2018. So coming up a year, I love Shayna Baszler. Ba- I know a lot of people don't like Shayna, but I do. It's awesome. And hold on one moment. We're gonna pause for a second. All right. Sorry about that. And to uh, speak with the old Department of Sanitation here at the train station. <laughs> so apparently, oh, all right. I will uh, again. Pause for the cause. All right, we're back. Just had to take care of a little bit of business there. <laughs> um, so what was I? Oh, yeah, NXT on USA. So the NXT tag team titles are on the line. The NXT Women's Championship is on the line. Shayna Baszler defending against the number one contender, Candice LeRae. Uh, that and so much more on NXT, but... The thing about NXT on Wednesday is that... Oh, and also NXT this Wednesday, limited commercial interruption. Which is pretty cool because the network, WWE Network, was limited commercial interruption. So this Wednesday will also be the debut of AEW Dynamite on TNT and the return of the war. It's not the Monday Night War now, it is the Wednesday Night War. War, 8 p.m. USA Network NXT, 8 p.m. TNT Network, All Elite Wrestling. Folks, I am being 100% honest with you when I am saying I have a second television ready to go to be set up every Wednesday. So I will be watching both NXT and AEW. I wish I had this set up in the 90s when I was watching Raw and Nitro. Uh, But the good part about Nitro was... Nitro used to re-air at midnight on Mondays. So I would actually tape the replay of Nitro. I'd watch Raw Live once I figured out they did this. I would tape uh, Nitro, the replay. So I got to watch both. But I don't have a DVD player anymore. I don't have a cable box. So I can't DVR it. Uh, So I have no other choice but to watch them both. Now, granted, I know, uh, I think NXT... After it airs on USA, I believe, unlike Raw and SmackDown, where they'll they have to wait 30 days. Well, that may change for SmackDown. I don't know. But Raw and SmackDown, they have to wait 30 days before they can air that episode on the WWE Network. I'm, I'm pretty sure NXT will air the following day on the WWE Network, uh, the, the previous night. So 
I could do that, but everyone knows that, you know, if it's live, you can't miss it when it's live. All right, so we're still here from the Seaford train station. Probably the first time ever a podcast has been recorded at a Long Island Railroad station, I think. We're here in the parking lot, Seaford train station. Wonderful cleanup day uh, being had, and I'm here. uh, Nobody watching me. Uh, Probably just people in the cars getting off the 135 or getting on the 135 wondering, what is this idiot doing in the parking lot doing a podcast for nobody? That's nobody here because everyone's busy. They're doing their thing. They're cleaning up the community. And that guy's on his motorcycle. But I want to talk about, uh, let's talk about Ring of Honor. And we have a new Ring of Honor world champion, the first ever Mexican-born Ring of Honor world champion, Roosh, has defeated the Kingdom's Matt Taven this past Friday at death before dishonor. I want to... So, I got to say this. Um, I love the fact that Ring of Honor's pay-per-views are on Fridays. Uh, it's great. It's good. Um, a, no competition. You know, uh, you know, WWE is pretty much locked in on Sunday pay-per-views. Uh, and everyone else is kind of following suit. To, like, uh, AEW's doing Saturday pay-per-views. Uh, I think... I don't know if Impact Bound for Glory is on a Saturday or Sunday. I forget. But, you know, a lot of groups are like, hey, you know, forget it. We're just going to do our own thing. So Ring of Honor does them on Fridays, which is cool. Problem is, they start at 9 p.m., which is not cool. <laughs> um, you know, after a long day of work, I just, I got to admit, I fell asleep during the last couple of matches. Not because it was boring. Death Before Dishonor. If it's still worth the purchase, go to Fight TV, your pay-per-view. You can order the replay. Um, that was a mic falling. You can order the replay. Uh, if you have Honor Club, you can check it out at any time on Honor Club or on Fight. But I just couldn't stay up. And again, it's not because of Ring of Honor. Just It's a 9 p.m. start time for crying out loud. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to watch it. It's funny enough. I woke up right at the end as uh, Roosh was handed the AEW title. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's how that worked. Um, I figured Roosh was going to win. I like Roosh. Uh, Roosh. It's fun to say Roosh, first of all. Um, you know, I saw him at well at G1 Supercard when he beat Dalton Castle in like under 15 seconds. I kind of figured, you know what? I think... I think Ring of Honor is going to do something big with this guy. Uh, and they did. They did. Uh, I think Roosh is going to be a wonderful champion. He may be a, He's undefeated in Ring of Honor. So he may be a long-standing champion. Uh, we're going to find out a final battle. Because Roosh, or whoever the Ring of Honor world champion is, come final battle, will take on the winner of the number one contenders tournament. Uh, which is going on right now at Ring of Honor. So if anyone's listening at ROH, look, obviously I'm not going to change anything. Um, You had some guy on there from some other YouTube show. Look, if you want a consummate professional, if anybody's listening, AEW, WWE, ROH, Impact, New Japan, NYWC, AAA, any of them, I'm your guy. If you need a commentator, call me. If you need an interviewer, call me. You want a voiceover guy? Crying out loud, call me. But uh, yeah, 9 p.m. pay per views, they're tough. They're tough for an older generation. I'm almost 40, for God's sakes. I gotta go to bed on time. You know, I got people counting on me to play PUBG at 10 30. I've told them no. And now I know why. Because I'm asleep by almost 11. But uh, nevertheless, though, Roosh is the new Ring of Honor World Champion, which is awesome. Good luck to him. And, um, oh, sorry about that. And with that, folks, I think we're going to call it a week. This was a special edition, actually, a special Sunday edition of Talking More Wrestling. I'll be back this Saturday at 6.05 p.m. Eastern uh, after this huge, huge premiere week of wrestling. Like I said, it is... There has been no better time to be a professional wrestling fan than right now. It's a lot of dedication, a lot of television to watch. Um, I may have to 
reconsider a lot of these podcasts that I do. But speaking of which, wherever you listen to the podcast, please give me a five star review, a like, any whatever whatever the voting or the the rating uh, thing is on the app that you're using right now. Please, please give me a positive review. It'd be awesome. The more reviews I get, then the more that this show can be uh, found by all wonderful fans, wonderful wrestling fans. Remember, folks, I'm here. I'm having a good time. You know, there's a lot of podcasts. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna call anyone out by name, but I will call out. There are a lot of podcasts that all they do is bitch and moan about the product. Quite frankly, if you want to bitch and moan, don't watch the product. All right, I don't care. I've, like I've said before, I've probably seen. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of matches, and I would say most of them have been terrible from an aesthetic point of view. But each and every one of them have heart, have desire. They're doing what I wish I could do. So I'm here to put the joy back into professional wrestling podcasts. I'm going to try and kayfabe it as much as possible. I'm going to lie, that's the hardest thing I can do as I'm breaking kayfabe right now. Uh, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to bitch. I'm not going to moan. Yeah, there may be some decisions. I think they should have went another way. But you know what? I'm not in charge of those decisions. Other people are. I'm still enjoying the action. And I hope you are too. And of course, check out all the other podcasts on my network. The Retro Gamers Podcast every Tuesday. The Yin and the Yang Podcast every Friday. The Better Half Podcast every other Wednesday. More of the same will pop up periodically, but subscribe anyway. And I will catch you this Saturday as we will continue talking more wrestling. This Monday, Raw will be live on the USA Network. And the Universal Championship will be on the line as Rey Mysterio will go one-on-one with the reigning Universal Champion Seth Rollins. Can Rey Mysterio turn the hands back in time? Some people say he still has it. Others say he's never lost it, but Seth Rollins has been a determined champion. This man has beaten Brock Lesnar twice in the 2019 calendar year, both times for the Universal Championship. We will see as Rollins is scheduled to take on The Fiend inside Hell in a Cell this Sunday. Can he get past the veteran, Rey Mysterio? Speaking of which, the beast Brock Lesnar will be on Raw this Friday. He will be challenging Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. What will he, or more importantly, his advocate Paul Heyman, have to say this Monday? One half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Alexa Bliss, will go one-on-one with Sasha Banks. Of course, Banks this Sunday will be inside Hell in a Cell with Becky Lynch for the Royal Women's Championship. But she has to get past a former multi-time women's champion and, again, current co-holder of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. That's Alexa Bliss taking on Sasha Banks. In a rematch for the WWE United States Championship, Cedric Alexander will go one-on-one with the phenomenal United States Champion, AJ Styles. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode will put the Raw Tag Team Championship on the line against Heavy Machinery. A lot of people put doubt into Roode and Ziggler, seeing that they were just thrown together as a tag team. They dominated through the gauntlet. They won the tag titles at Clash of Champions. But now they have to go up against one of the biggest tag teams on Raw today. Otis and Tucker, Heavy Machinery. That is Monday Night Raw this Monday, 8 p.m. live on the USA Network. The Wednesday Night War will begin this Wednesday, October 2nd, as AEW and NXT will go head-to-head. And this Wednesday, NXT will be live for two hours on the USA Network. Three tremendous title matches. The Undisputed Era will defend their NXT Tag Team Championships against the Street Profits. The current almost year-long reign of Shayna Baszler will be on the line as she defends her NXT Women's Championship against number one contender Candice LeRae. And of course, the big one, the NXT Championship will be on the line as the current number one contender Matt Riddle will go one-on-one with the UE's Adam Cole Bay Bay, that is this Wednesday live on the USA Network NXT. All right, so let's run down the card on the debut episode of All Elite Wrestling on TNT. Of course, AEW Dynamite on TNT. Cody will go up against Sammy Guevara in, I believe, what will be the official 
first match of AEW on TNT. The AEW Women's Championship will be decided. The first ever AEW Women's Championship, that is. As Rio and Nyla Rose will go one-on-one in Washington, D.C. Marcus Jacob Friedman and Brandon Cutler will go one-on-one. Hangman Page and Pac will see each other inside the squared circle. Wednesday, October 2nd at the Capital One Arena in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. John Moxley will be there live. We have not seen him in AEW since Fighter Fest. Uh, recently coming off a uh, terrible infection that he's gotten through, so good to hear that. Uh, of course, John Moxley and Kenny Omega will finally step in the ring. We were supposed to see it at All Out, but unfortunately, due to medical conditions, John Moxley could not make it. But they will meet up at full gear. That, that may be the wrong title for that pay per view. And of course, in a six man tag team match, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks will go up against the reigning AEW World Champion Chris Jericho and two mystery partners. Who will they be? Will they be a new tag team? Will they be a tag team recently signed to AEW? We will find out this Wednesday, 8 p.m., AEW Dynamite on TNT. A new era in the history of SmackDown will begin this Friday as Friday Night SmackDown debuts on Fox. And three tremendous matches have been announced. The four horsewomen will once again go at it in a tag team match, a rematch from Madison Square Garden. It will be the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair going up against the Boss and Hug Connection. Also, this Friday, we will see in a career-ending ladder match, one of these men will no longer be with the WWE as Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon in their over-year-long rivalry finally comes to a head as they put their contracts in a briefcase, suspended 15 feet above the ring. Now, both of these men have histories in ladder matches, maybe not as successful, Shane McMahon, actually, he has won a ladder match, an epic ladder match back in 1999, as him and Mr. McMahon went up against Stone Cold Steve Austin in a handicap ladder match. King of the Ring 1999, check it out. Kevin Owens, unsuccessful, but challenged Finn Balor for the NXT Championship in a ladder match from the first takeover in Brooklyn. Check that one out on the network. But this time, careers will be on the line and literally hang in the balance. Roman Reigns and Eric Rowan in an epic rematch from Clash of Champions will battle it out this Friday on Fox. And of course, the WWE Championship will be on the line as the beast Brock Lesnar challenges current WWE Champion Kofi Kingston. That and a whole lot more this Friday, the debut of Friday Night SmackDown on Fox.